my life was almost over before it began. My mother uh, decided uh, about 63 years ago that she was going to have an abortion. It just wasn't in her plan to have a child. Ended up going to the doctor and uh, the doctor was arrested and I was born. Throughout my teenage years, I studied Buddhism and Hinduism and Maoism and Taoism and Sikhism and Jainism and all kinds of other isms and schisms, and including the Bible, just trying to find out what the answer was, if there was any answer after this life. I decided I wanted to head out to the epicenter of religious thought back in the 70s, which was California. And I wanted to be an actor, you know, like everybody in California. I ended up meeting this girl and she said, if you want to be an actor, what you might want to think about doing is being a model. She liked my look, you know, I had the long hair and the beard and stuff, which was a different look than anybody else. So they did some shots with me and she said, yeah, she said, you, you got what we want, but you got to go to New York. And I thought, well, you know, this was great. There's a major, major company, a modeling agency, acting agency. And so I thought, okay, I'll do this. My friends were having a party at Balboa Park, and it was a beautiful night. Uh, I remember fireworks going off, climbing up on the roof of my van, and I'm just kind of looking up, and I'm thinking, wow, I've got everything. And now here I am going into New York, I'm gonna become famous and all this. I was all excited about this. And I remember just looking up, and I remember just holding my hands up, and I started to feel this tingling come up into my chest. And the next thing, boom, I fell down on the roof of my and van. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, no, wait a minute, Ken, what's I going on? Not Ken, you might be dying. No, you can't be dying. You got all this in front of you. You can't be dying. But then I started to think, you might be dying. You better figure this out quick. So I started thinking all the different, you know, Eastern thought, Buddhism, kind of settled in on Hinduism because that kind of made the most sense to me. Something, and then I thought that might be the answer. Maybe that's it. But I remember having this incredible feeling of being lost, where if I did leave this world at that moment, I wasn't going where I wanted to go. And I remember just laying there and I had this fear that overtook me about dying. And I remember just saying in myself, you know, God, I don't know who you are, what you are, but please show me. And um, that verse that I had read in the Bible came into my mind at that moment. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes unto the Father except through me. And I remember hearing that and I thought, okay, okay, give me another chance. Let me see what that means. That night, um, I left the party, um, went back to where I was living, and I opened the Bible. And I found what Jesus meant when he said, I am the only way. And I realized all these other religions and cults, the reason why they were so popular is because they appealed to your pride, they gave you a way to earn your way into heaven and to come to know Christ, to come to know God through his son. There's no way to get to him except through what Jesus did when he died on the cross. And that night I gave my life to Christ. After being very successful in New York, but seeing what that world was about, I wanted to go someplace else. God opened the doors. Someone had a sailboat for sale in the Caribbean, never sailed before, but I thought, hey, this is the answer. Lived off the water for a while, sailing, spearfishing, and then ended up getting a job on a three-masted topsail schooner. We're several hundred miles off, off the coast, and we hit the perfect storm. We were in a raging storm. Lightning cracking, rain coming down. We had seas 20, 25 feet. So the captain told me to go up on the mizzen mast, which is the mast in the back. And he went up on the main and he sent the other crew member up on, on the foremast in the front. So we're up there wrapping up the topsail. So as we're doing this, uh, I remember the lightning cracked and we're looking out on the horizon and all of a sudden this monster wave comes. They call it a rogue wave. And just, you know, a lot higher than all the other waves. I'll never forget the sight. And I remember looking at the captain like, what do we do? And all I remember seeing him do is, he grabbed the mast. And, and so we all grabbed the mast. For a split second, the lightning cracked. I looked down below and there was no boat. And there were these three little sticks sticking up in the ocean. And I realized at that moment that this could be it. We could be done. But it was so different than that time in California because I wasn't afraid to die. I knew if I died, I knew where I would be. There was no fear, no fear, and that was amazing. The next thing I know, all of a sudden, the schooner, woof, comes up out of the water. Water's coming out, bilges are pumping like crazy, but the point of it was we made it. So I left working on the schooner and my life at sea, ended up moving into the brokerage business. Uh, went to work for a major Wall Street firm in Lancaster. Things were going along pretty good, but uh, what happened uh, is that I started falling away from my faith. I got into pornography, uh, seriously addicted to pornography. Uh, and again, on the front, on the surface, I look great. Nothing, you know, that's a hidden sin for a lot of men. 
but I got deeply involved in pornography that my life was deteriorating. And it almost destroyed me, almost destroyed me. But then the Lord brought me back. And all of a sudden, he opened up more doors for me. My business was prospering. That went on for quite a number of years uh, until up about uh, 17, 18 years ago. Uh, I, I, I just started nibbling away again at sin in my life. And now I saw myself again falling back into that place. And what happened to me is I fell into a, a much, much darker place than what I had even been before. I had a couple of girls. The one was a paralegal, the other was a school teacher, but they also had another career at night. They were escorts and found out they were also had another big problem. That was cocaine and crack. I ended up becoming addicted. And then at the same time, I was also giving them rides to their appointments. They introduced me to some other girls and I was kind of their confidant, their protector, their pimp. I was dropping a couple girls off uh, at a hotel over in New York. All of a sudden the front doors bust open and in come all these state cops. They grab me, throw me down on the pool table and cuff me up and haul me off. I remember just then at that point, just looking up to God, <laughs> even though I felt so far away from him and just saying, I don't want to come home to you like this. And I'm going to, this is, this, 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 I don't want to come home to you like this. So do whatever you need to do to bring me back to you. I was charged with five felony twos. I was facing uh, four to seven years upstate. And, uh, but the, the good part about it was that I knew this was the Lord answering my prayer. What that began in me was this revitalization where God started bringing me back and cleaning me up and continuing to work in my life again and bringing me to a place where I know what's back there and I don't ever want to live behind the curtain anymore. And then I visited LCBC and I'm very thankful to LCBC that um, they opened their doors and that I was loved in spite of all the horrendous things that I had done in my past. And one of the great things about it was through that, four or five years ago, the doors opened up uh, for me to go into York County Prison and uh, begin a prison ministry there on Monday nights, which has been, it's like the highlight of my week. And God's blessed me in such a way that um, I can talk to a CEO of a Fortune 500 company because of my background about Christ and about my story. Or I can talk to a guy in the corner with a needle stuck in his arm. I, I look back on my life now and I, I can't really explain to myself why I would have allowed myself to, to go back again. I guess I was only giving part of myself. I didn't want to, I wanted to hold on to something. And this is why God, he, he is a God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. I mean, you know, the, the only way to really be found is to know that you're really lost. My name's Ken and I'm a life changed by Christ.